Good day everyone. Welcome to the lecture of Marxism and popular culture. A lot of studies around popular culture emerge from Marxism. Marxist theory is inclined of studying the masses. Now, let us start with a question. What is Marxism? Marxism is a social, political, and economic philosophy named after Karl Marx. Si Karl Marx is gipanganak ni siya sa Germany in the year 1818 and died in the year 1883. Young remains is naaran sa Highgate Cemetery in North London. Marxism is usan siya ka method of socio-economic analysis that analyzes class relations and societal conflict by utilizing materialist interpretation of historical development and a dialectical view of social transformation. It originates from the mid to late 19th century works of German philosophers Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. It originally consisted of three related ideas, which are the philosophical anthropology, theory of history, and an economic and political program. According to Marx's perspective, class conflict caused the progression of a society from capitalist to socialist to communist. Marxism is maunyang known karon as a conflict theory. Why? Because it states that a society is in conflict with each other, and Marxism claims that this conflict is between the rich and the poor. Ang Marxism para sa mga sociologist is a political and economic philosophy. So ang pasabot ani is that Marxism is a view of unsa na estado sa mga butang karon. Dili pasabot sa butang is object, but I am referring sa mga situations sa tuwang society. And this philosophy also suggests as to where the society is headed based sa current situation. Gipredek sa Marxism kung unsa ang kaugmaon sa society. The danger is that we start to view it based on what we understand about its relationship to communism and the politics and oppression of the old Soviet Union. But Marx never saw communism in this way. He saw it as liberation and as leveler. Meaning, ang pagtanaw ni Marx sa communism is a solution for equality, a way of creating a fairer society, and of a way of getting the best out of all people, not just those with money and power. Since then, Marxism developed into different branches and schools of thought, and there is now no single definitive Marxist theory. So let us proceed. Marx's methodology uses economic and socio-political inquiry and applies that to the analysis and critic of the development of capitalism and the role of class struggle in systemic economic change. To really understand Marxism, we need to start with its opposite, the capitalism. Capitalism represents the type of society you and I live today. In Marx's terms, it is an economic system based on private ownership of the means of production. Ang pasabot ani is that our society today is based on a few people who own factories, businesses, shops, and other corporations. These corporations aren't owned by the people na nagtrabaho and walay workers na stakeholder at the same time sa corporations. Instead, these were owned by the owners only. During the Industrial Revolution, Marx was formulating his theories, a time when Britain and other countries were going through a very dramatic change. The old feudal system, when lords of the manor owned the land, meant that the ordinary people had freedom and rights to all land. But when the government passed the number of enclosure acts in the 1700s and 1800s, ordinary people no longer have the right to live on this land and many of them were forced to pack up and move to the towns and the cities which were beginning to grow due to the increase in factories and textile melts. So during this time, napugus in town ang mga kabos, ang mga namuyo sa lugar nga muhawa, whereas previously, people were free to keep their own animals and grow their own crops on common land. Once they reach the city, they have to find work in the factories in the employment of the factory owner. Lisod o delikado ang ilahang mga trabaho sa factories Ug dugang nga nakapait is gamay ra kayo ilahang sweldo. Nga naman, because a lot of factory owners believe that if they will pay high wages, this would mean less profit for them. No, lisod kaayo ang kinabuhi sa mga tao during sa capitalism. So ang nahitabo, children were often used as cheap labor. The Industrial Revolution promoted a capitalist way of thinking 
that is what we call as capitalist ideology, and also created two distinct groups of people, the factory owners who were middle class, Marx called this the bourgeoisie, and the workers or working class, Marx called this the proletariat. Marx was on the side of the proletariat because he saw them as being treated unfairly by the factory owners. Dili lang ka nakita ni Marx nga ang workers were treated unfairly and were being oppressed, but he also saw the system is trying very hard to make sure that the poor stay poor and the rich continued to get richer. So Marxism views a capitalist society as a system that encourages inequality because the rich will always need someone to do the work they don't want to do. This is why it is called a conflict theory because society is in conflict, the proletariat versus the bourgeoisie. However, Marx also suggested that at some point, the working class would realize that they had the power to change things through education and personal development. Some members of the proletariat would begin to understand the system better and devised ways of changing it. Marx believed that such radical change could only come about through revolution when the workers rise up and overthrow those who are treating them unfairly. In place of capitalism, a new system would be established in which all people were treated equally and all the factories and businesses were owned by everyone. In other words, they were communally owned. Marx called this system as communism. So how important Marxism is? Although Karl Marx did not have a fully developed theory of culture, it is possible to discover the basis of one in his understanding of history and politics. What this understanding points to is the insistence that if we are to critically comprehend a cultural text or practice, we have to locate it historically in relation to its conditions of production. So this approach is na ay and sa ubang historical approaches to culture because Marx's conception of history contained in the now famous base or superstructure model of historical development. Marx argues that each significant period in history is constructed around a particular mode of production, that is, the way in which a society is organized, like for example, slave, feudal, capitalist, to produce the material necessaries of life, like food, shelter, and others. In general terms, each mode of production produces, first, specific ways of obtaining the necessaries of life, second, specific social relationships between workers and those who control the mode of production, and third, specific social institutions including cultural ones. At the heart of this analysis is the claim that how a society produces its means of existence ultimately determines the political, social, and cultural shape of that society and its possible future development. Under socialism, the means of production are owned or controlled by the state for the benefit of all, an arrangement that is compatible with democracy and a peaceful transition from capitalism. Marxism justifies and predicts the emergence of a stateless and classless society without private property. The vaguely socialist society, however, would be preceded by the violent seizure of the state and the means of production by the proletariat, who would rule in an interim dictatorship. It examines the effect of capitalism on labor, productivity, and economic development and argues for a worker revolution to overturn capitalism in favor of communism. Before giving the virtual floor to our second reporter, I would like to leave a quote by Karl Marx stating, The proletarians have nothing to lose but chains, so members of the working classes throughout the world should cooperate to defeat capitalism and achieve victory in the class conflict. Thank you for listening. I am Leonis Halsi Kagata and I will be reporting about the popular culture. Popular culture is the set of practices, beliefs, and objects that embody the most broadly shared meanings of a social system. Now, according to Delany Wan, popular culture kuno is katong mga products and expressions which is frequently encountered sa tanan or widely accepted nga giaprobahan sa tanan and the characteristic nga particular sa usa ka society popular culture includes media objects entertainment and leisure fashion and trends and linguistic conventions now when we talk about popular culture 
it is usually associated with either mass culture or the folk culture. Mass culture is about the culture of great majority of people, which is karon nga mga kultura nga gi-accept sa tanan. When we talk about folk culture, is more traditional. Kato mga kultura sa una of how we used to do things, which is naagihapon hantud karon. Popular culture is also differentiated from high culture and various institutional cultures. When we talk about high culture, money yung mga kultura or objects of aesthetic value. So meaning, katong mga exemplary art nga, mga classic arts sa una nga deserve sundugon or i-imitate hantod karon nga generation or hantod karon nga culture. When we talk about various institutional cultures, is about political, educational, or legal culture katong sa una nga. Part sa tong kultura nga na politiko, part sa tong kultura nga maskwilata, o uban pa. Now, the association of popular culture with mass culture leads to a focus on the position of popular culture within a capitalist mode of economic production. Now, natay duha ka lens that talks about the popular culture, which is in the economic lens and in the subculture lens. Now, popular culture through economic lens kono is a set of commodities produced through capitalistic processes kono, which is an example ani is katong mga popular culture nato like music and entertainment nga nag gain og profit or gisold to consumers para sa atong economy. When popular culture through subculture lens is mopod ni agatong mga culture which is seen as a set of practices by artists or other kinds of culture makers that results in performances like mga example is part sa atong culture is ka mga festival. Now, na festival nga gigama in order to showcase kung unsa ang kultura sa atong lugar na mga performances, nga na mga audience, nga makasabot sila kung through festivals is masabta nila nga maunay kultura sa Pilipinas. Now, the primary driving force behind popular culture is mass appeal. Now, mass appeal is a media entertainment company in which Ilang mission is to represent and progress ang culture sa usa ka lugar into global scale or kanang ipa hibaw nila sa tibuok kalibutan. Now, ingon si Theodor Adorno, ang mass appeal ko no is like an industry. So, as an industry, like entertainment industry, mga media nga na, they influence people. Like everyday lives of people of a given society, like kung unsay makita nato sa media is pwede tanga nga maapiktuhan. Now, ang popular culture is has a way of influencing sa atong individual nga attitudes. Like kung unsay makita nato sa media, mo reflect sa unsay atong bation, like di taganahan or mapungot ta sa usa ka certain topics nga iproduce sa media. Now, in the media industry, we have here the most common popular culture, which is in the entertainment, like mga films, mga music, sa television, video games, or kung unsay ilang ipagawas, or ipakita nato is ma-reflect po ni sa atong individual attitudes. Now, we have here sports, news, or sa in people or places like politics, fashion, technology, and the way how we talk, like mga slang, languages, inga na, ma-influence po ta, the way they speak. Now, let's talk about the advantage of mass culture, which is, it is a universal accessibility as a result of commercialization. For example, the painting of Mona Lisa, which is painted by Leonardo da Vinci. So, it is one of the most 
frequently used images in the popular culture. Kaya nga naman, gihimuan ni siya like into memes, nahimo ni siya ng sikat sa worldwide, and then later on, gihimo po ni siya ng advertising campaigns. Like, gamit ni siya into advertisement, like, nga na. High culture may be down to the level of popular culture, but popular culture will never be able to rise to the level of the high culture. Let's proceed to disadvantage of the mass culture. Now, popular culture distorts the cultural values, substitute eternal with short term, creates seductive word of pleasures and passing ideals, which is... Uh, wala na siya nakatabang sa culture in which ang society is na disoriented na sila and gives misconceptions about morality and now some people promote stereotype the way of lives so since wala may mass media outlet nga nagquestion about the existence of capitalism or individualism Mass media is invested in and generated by capitalism. Now, they are there to enforce what do we people are doing. Now, let me introduce to you the... Let me introduce to you the structure of human society, which is a base and superstructure relationship. Now, kaning uh, theoretical concepts is na developed ni Karl Marx who is one of the sociologist founders. Now, the base is the one that is the source of production forces or katong mga materials and resources na gamiton to generate goods which is gikinahanlan sa Osaka society. Kung moingon po tag superstructure, mo ni nag-describe sa katong mga kultura, mga ideology, mga norms which is naanda na or mga identities nga makapadescribe sa Osaka tao in which they are inhabited. Now, in addition, ang social institutions, mga political structure or the state or society's governing apparatus mauna na belong sa superstructure. Now, capitalism is involved here. Like, a capitalism is the only mode of production nga nag-introduce sa mass education. Like, capitalism ang godang first mode nga nag-require o mga educated workforce while ang mass education is a requirement. Kaya nga naman, ang mga naa sa superstructure is katong mga tao nga nag-maintain para sa base. Culture plays significant role in this drama. Kaya nga naman, kung unsa may tabo sa superstructure, mauni ang passive reflection sa kung unsa na may tabo sa naa sa base. So, mauna ni ang idea which is capitalism which wealth accumulates wealth. Kaya nga naman, those the idea of powerful economic class mag-take advantage ato sa mga lower economic classes. Now, how much the economy influence the culture and dominate culture? Unsa may nakahimo sa popular culture into popular or na by relationship ang group sa society sa apikto sa society or the culture. Ideology is not just ideas or a means of viewing the world, but exists as it played out in the material world. Like, in culture, kung kinsa tong mga dato, we are giving them the privilege. We are giving them the variety of opportunities. Now, makita na to nga we overburden the poor. Now, this ideology of capitalism can see it in a material world and relationships. So, katong mga people or poor classes is mabiyaan. Kaya nga naman, ang i-prioritize nila is katong mga health, ability to make money nila para sila mabuhi. 
Ideology entails actions by people leaving the imaginary relation to something defined by ideology. Now, when we look at, at schools, nga nung naa may mga subjects nga dapat itudlo na to. Kay, nito utang nga kana is importante para nato or kana is part na sa atong kultura nga maskwila o makasabot sa mga subjects nga gihatag. Kay magamit man na nato to train yan nato yang adults to go work after. Capitalist ideology is proliferated and reinforced systematically through different institutions like education, mass media, and employment. Now, for the education, ni skwila ta para makatrabaho o makakwarta. In the mass media, gigamit ang mass media to gain profit. Samot na sa employment, in which, kung naanatay trabaho, naanatay sweldo nga magamit. Mass media proliferates information, knowledge, and social representation. Now, in relation to popular culture, ang mass media is gigamit siya in order to disseminate information. Those information nga related sa popular culture is magain sa mga tao in order to have knowledge about it. And then, kadtong nahibaw anila is i-apply na to nila into social representation in order to gain profit or in relation to the socio-economic structure na. Now, the question is, who owns the media? Mass media is very small in terms of invested players, like mass media normalizes and legitimizes the current system, kung sa mga panghitabo, in these current days. Ang tang iya sa mass media are those capitalism, or kadong mga tao in a higher class who are generating katong mga naa sa superstructure model nga nag-control or nag-reinforce kung unsay buhaton sa tao or katong mga media behaves so mga kapitalist ang mga nagdumaan ng mass media and that's all thank you for listening